Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Okay, so this is just an opportunity for us to connect amongst, e amongst each other. If you can just introduce yourselves and say where you live and just share what, why are you here today? What's, what's, what do you really care about with these issues? Just take a, one or two minutes each to do that, please. Lay down our souls, but we won't stand by and watch while they dig us a hole. They are digging us a hole. They are digging us a hole. Six feet underground, where our future will go. They are digging us a hole. They are digging us a hole Six feet underground Where the pipeline will go We will lay down our bodies We will lay down our souls But we won't stand by and watch While they dig us a hole They are digging us a hole they are digging us a hole Six feet underground Where our future will go They are digging us a hole They are digging us a hole Six feet underground Where the pipeline will go We will lay down our bodies we will lay down our souls, but we won't stand by and watch while they dig us a hole. They are digging us a hole. They are digging us a hole. Six feet underground where our future will go. Tarsen's pipeline, protect us. We don't need no climate trauma, hey! Obama, we don't need no 
We can stay here a bit longer and do some more chants or we can go back to the parking lot and have an open mic and hear different people's voices and, and stories. What, what do you prefer? Okay, let's, let's do it here, yeah. But, but we need to clear the entrance to the garage, to the parking, the parking lot, please. So if we can move further down here. Yeah, let, let's just... Right. Oh, uh, <laughs> open mic while we're standing on the road. Okay, so <laughs> we're good here. This, uh, I heard there was a, a lady who had a personal story from her experience in Alberta, Canada, with the uh, effects of tar sands. Who was that? Okay, Susie's gonna share a few words. Fort Chipewee in Alberta, and we were downstream from the Bechtel 
tar sands. They were dumping the effluent right into the Athabasca River, and the, the water for the community of Portugal comes out of Lake Athabasca. Uh, people were getting sick, the fish were being born with two heads, and um, people started getting cancer, and, and now they're, they're now there's so much more. Back then it was just picked up. Now they're dying. Um, they're dying of cancer at rates five times what, what they have in Edmonton. Um, and not, not only the people, but the wolves and the, the moose and, and other wildlife are also being affected because they, they eat the fish and they drink the poison water. Um, and uh, then my husband and I both had cancer. Um, uh, he died four years ago, uh, I survived, um, but, you know, I, I worry, of course I worry about, about, about the climate change, but I worry about all of those, those people and all the wildlife downstream. Thank you, Susie, for sharing that. Um, And for many years, the Canadian government was doing their own monitoring of the toxics in the, in the rivers in Alberta. And uh, just last year, an independent study by the University of Alberta, David Schindler, they actually found that the rivers were very poisoned and they, like Susie shared, the fish were being affected, so it's a huge problem over there. Joey Gray, is Joey Gray here? Joey Gray from Tar Sands Action Seattle is going to give us a few words about Tar Sands locally. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Carlo, for organizing this and for everybody else for helping to organize and for being here. This kind of thing is happening all over North America, as we know, and it's just growing and growing. And being here on this sunny day is just a way to help continue building that. And so I would like to talk a little bit about what we do after this and if you have a cell phone with you and you haven't already got the white house and patty murray and senator maria cantwell's phone numbers on speed dial i want you to do that right now <laughs> okay so the white house comment line and it's really important to call this week and today and every day until this decision is made the White House comment line is 202-456-1111. Just put that in your speed dial, 202-456-1111. And call it before 2 o'clock in the afternoon our time, because they're three hours earlier on the East Coast. They have volunteers answering the phone, so be really nice to them. And the two other numbers I'm going to give you for your for your phones are Senator. Oh, okay. That one was 202-456-1111. Senator Patty Murray. Her Washington D.C. phone number is 202-224-2621. That's Senator Patty Murray. She's from Bothell and she's been our senator for a long time now. Anybody know the number of years offhand? Like at least 12 or 20 or something? Um, okay, her number again is 202-224-2621. And again, call before two o'clock p.m. our time. And our other senator from Washington State is Maria Cantwell. C-A-N-T-W-E-L-L -L -L, and her Washington DC phone number is 202-224-3441. That's Maria Cantwell's Washington DC office, 202-224-3441. And the reason it's really important to do those things, even though we're out here protesting and we have a lot more work to do like that, we can't give up on keeping in their faces our elected officials are accountable to us not the corporations and they want to be able to talk to their colleagues and say i heard from hundreds of people today and that's us and so if you can commit now to today when you get home 
Tell one other person, just one other person, those same three numbers and get them to do it too. Because what we do right here has a, has, has a ripple effect throughout our community and it's really important. So we've got to keep doing those things even if it feels like it's not enough. That combined with this and combined with all the other things, our purchasing decisions make a huge difference. I'm also here to talk about not only the Keystone XL Tar Sands Pipeline, but the other pipeline projects. Coming down from Edmonton, Alberta, across, which is about, say, 20 hours from here, coming down from there, through across the Rockies, through really treacherous, not very inhabited lands, across lots of waterways, there's a Kinder Morgan Tar Sands Pipeline already delivering Tar Sands oil through our Salish Sea out to global markets. The Kinder Morgan Company is named after Richard Kinder, who is the former COO of the Enron Energy Corporation. And we all know that didn't go too well for California. So these, these people making these decisions are not doing it on our behalf. They just want to make more and more and more money. And this pipeline is being proposed to be expanded, like doubled or tripled now. And there's an amazing actions going on in British Columbia with thousands of people at the Victoria capital and with people meeting at the, the electoral district offices all across British Columbia. So we've got lots of solidarity across British Columbia, Washington State, and the Salish Sea. So thank you all. and. Yes, thank you, Joy. And, and Joy also was going to mention that all five refineries in Washington State are refining tar sands from Alberta this, in this moment. There's two oil tankers coming down the Puget Sound full of tar sands every week to the refinery. So there's a lot of work to do here in our state to get tar sands out of our state. So open mic. I followed this project closely from when Bill McKibben called people to D.C. a couple of summers ago. I do think that fighting this particular pipeline was a very big deal. It's become a flashpoint for the climate change movement. But there are so many others. Fracking, mountaintop removal, coal trains now going to come through uh, our state. We need to continue to fight them one by one, but we more than anything need to put a price on carbon so that all of these simply become no longer financially viable. Uh, we need to put a price on carbon. And Congress is not is not doing it yet. There is more talk about it than what you hear in the media. I'm a member of a group called Citizens Climate Lobby. I would recommend that you all Google it and consider joining. There are groups in many cities. If there's not one yet where you live, you can start one. I, what this group does is teaches us to become effective lobbyists on behalf of the climate. Uh, they have a proposal for a carbon fee that would gradually increase and basically make this project not a, no longer financially viable. I mean, as, as Joey said, they're just doing it for profit. If there's no more profit, it won't happen. So check it out, Citizens Climate Lobby. Thank you, friend. So, oh, Lisa, Lisa, Marcus. Hi, everybody. Um, so I just want to first take an, make an announcement about this movie, which is Friday, March 29th. It's called To the Last Drop, about the tar sands of Alberta at the Meaningful Movies in Wallingford, March 29th. Okay? And um, Friday. Friday. Yes, Friday. And let's see, what are my other thoughts? Um, I mean, I don't want to be here. Does anybody really want to be here? I mean, we've got, I just, it's like, ugh, another protest. But, um, I'm really glad that we are here and not claimed. Thank you. Thank you, Lisa. Open mic, anybody? No. I, I lived in Australia for 30 years, and I want to tell anyone who doesn't know that they 
of a carbon tax. Um, I don't see the Australian government as being very progressive, but they are ahead of the US. Right, all for a carbon tax. Uh, anybody from Idle No More want to talk? Olivia, <laughs> one feather. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> Hi guys, um, I just wanted to say we're doing a march on Thursday. Thursday and it's going to be from, from Westlake to SS Marine. We got a couple vans for transport back from the rally, but we're still working out all those details. But we'd like for all of you guys that can come out and join us to do so. We're trying to show the Lummi our support on a different level. Um, I'm half Native American, but it seems to me that it's a little hard to reach out to them out of respect issues, and I totally get that, and I do understand my culture very well, but at the same time, we're at 2013, and we need a call for different action, and we need to be able to hold each other's hands and feel comfortable in doing that and reaching out to each other. So this is my attempt. I'm trying to do that. I've got a Lummi speaker, Justin Finkbonner, that's going to come and speak for us. He's a very powerful guy. Um, and as far as that, it's mostly about the march and showing our support for them by putting our feet on the ground and showing what we can do to support them, what keep time? their secret land safe. 3 p.m. And where's the meeting place? It's at Westlake Center, and we'll have route maps there when you guys show up. So. I do, it's a Facebook event already. Um, just get a hold of me and I'll send you the link. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Thursday at 3 p.m. at Westlake, we're marching to SSA Marine. Thank you. Um, anybody else wants to share their opinion, Swan Eagle? I'm a frontline grandmother. I'm a hippie. I'm a defender of the earth and my children's future. And I learned to be a defender of the earth from traditional Diné and Hopi people fighting Peabody Coal. Everywhere on earth, genocide occurs. It has to do with resources and indigenous people. Privileged people need to be willing to give their lives to put a stop to genocide, pure and simple. If we don't, make ourselves ready for this reality, we have no chance of succeeding. This is last chance time for the sake of our children and all of life. Yay, thank you, John Eagle, longtime activist on the front lines. Any uh, college student here want to speak for the youth? All right, we have Rachel going to speak for college students and the youth. I don't know if I count as a college student anymore because I'm actually graduating this quarter. I have two final papers to turn in this week and then I'm done. And I'll have my governor's degree and I get to step out in the wide world and do something I'm not really sure what. Um, but I know that part of it will be stopping or doing whatever I can to stop this pipeline and fight against all the forces who want to exploit this planet until there's nothing left for the rest of us. And I think that's wrong. And I think we all need to come out and make a stand and tell them that this isn't going to happen. So I'm glad that you're all here. And on behalf of college students everywhere, let's fight this thing. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? Hi. Um, I'd just like to say I'm uh, not 100% sure that it's true, but I've been told that the way that they assess public opinion in you know, public offices is for every person who calls in, they assume there's about 10,000 people who feel the same way. So if you feel like your call doesn't mean much, just remember that. All right, thank you. Thank you for the advice. Um, Anybody from uh, faith communities would like to speak? Anybody else? Hi guys, I just want to briefly say that uh, there are people in the office today. I've seen them peeking out. So <laughs> we are, in our own special way, disrupting business as usual. I just wanted to let people know in case you didn't see them. Uh, you guys are missing the sunshine. <laughs> yeah, there are a couple of people in there, and they are they are looking through the lines. So we are being noticed. 
Thank you. Um, while I'm waiting for somebody to have the urge to speak, I just wanted to thank uh, all the co-organizers, Adam Gaia, Lisa Marcus, Hyde, and Lucy, <laughs> and all the support from you know the audio, the awesome uh, Seattle Community Media Lab uh, came with the audio. Thank you. And Jim uh, Up, Get Money Out of Politics Seattle are here with their Green Reaper costume. Thank you. And the Backbone Campaign has also supported this. Tar Sands Action Thanks. Seattle with uh, Joey Gray. Thank you. And um, well, the Edmonds Unitarians. Unitarians are always everywhere where there's this kind of fight together with other faiths. And the Oglalala Lakota are, he are, are here present and I don't know more also. Thank you so much. Okay, let's have one more person speak, please, at least. I'd also like to mention that another front for this is in the policy making of the jurisdictions that we live in and that we pay taxes in and that we work in. And that in, there are there are towns and counties and cities and tribes all across North America that have made resolutions against tar sands oil, against allowing tar sands through their area. And there's all kinds of formats for that. So can I see a show of hands of people here who live in a different jurisdiction than Seattle? If you could all find neighbors and friends in your jurisdiction and go to your go to your council people your mayor any kind of like elected commission for water quality any groups like that and find like-minded people and build a local movement at home to get writing in the policy of your cities and so that you can keep tar sands out in whatever ways work in the framework that's already there so find people and do that too. Thank you. All right, thank you. Eric. You might have to step a bit closer. Hello? Yeah. Hey, hey friends. Hey. So uh, I work with the Backbone Campaign and uh, I'm humbled to be here with you today. You know, I'm, I'm struggling to find my place. I'm not originally from the Salish Sea um, or this area. And um, it seems like we're all being alienated. You know, the ties that bind us are being torn apart. Um, but in these moments, we have an opportunity to you know, bring them back together. I really like the saying that um, we're building the new in the shell of the old. And um, um, you know, bringing that, that family back together. This is an expression of our humanity, and that is one of the greatest strengths of uh, the humanity that we possess. And that's an affront to, um, but that's our, I think, our greatest front against these corporate climate cooking criminals. So I'm glad to be in collaboration with you all. I look forward to uh, much more rebel rousing. Yes, it's totally clear that it's up to us and nobody else but us to stop all these um, situations. So, since we know there's some people in there, how about we do a little bit of chanting here? And you can see the letters there. Michael, speak to wind. Drop the tar sand. Michael, speak to wind. Drop the tar sand. Michael. Speak to win, drop the tar sands, 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 No Keystone XL pipeline. No Keystone XL pipeline. No Keystone XL pipeline. No. 
Keystone XL Pipeline. No. Keystone XL Pipeline. No. Keystone XL Pipeline. No. Keystone XL Pipeline. No. Keystone XL Pipeline. No. Keystone XL Pipeline. No. Keystone XL Pipeline. So, unless somebody wants to say anything else, we're going to wrap it up. Maybe we can sing the funeral song one more time to give closure to our time here together. Uh, you're m we are more than welcome to hang out at the park and ride. You can all hang out there a little longer. Um, where's Steve? Steve Burns is left. Who remembers the song? Do you remember the tune? Yeah. Thank <laughs> you.